and welcome to Festival of uh, Foolishness, the new interactive experience in Disney Dreamlight Valley Discord. If you haven't done this yet, I highly recommend you not watch this video. If you're planning to do this, it's probably gonna have a lot of spoilers about the event. And if you really want to go through this experience yourself with fresh perspective without any spoilers on your mind, I'm gonna link in the description the link to this event where you can go to their Discord server, Disney Dreamlight Valley Official Discord, and go through this experience. If you're not planning to go through it, or if you already went through it and want to see my reaction, then keep watching. It's probably gonna be good. I've never seen anything like this done before, so let's see how good it is. Welcome to the Festival of Foolishness. Long before the forgetting, Oh, the Festival of Foolishness has begun once, away, once again in a valley, but this time on our official Discord. Long before the forgetting, there was a festival dedicated to trickery and nonsense each spring. And as you've repelled, as you've repelled the forgetting, memories of the Festival of Foolishness returned to two particular valley villagers, Donald Duck and Stitch. And they can't wait to take part in a light-hearted prank on their friends and neighbors. That sounds like... like Donald and Stitch. But as usual, they could, they could do with a hero's help. Through your choices in this interactive story, you'll decide how the festival plays out and claim rewards from a variety of codes along the way. Also, if you did this and you want to see alternative endings, probably we're going to choose different choices, so that's going to be apparently different ending. And also... There's going to be codes for rewards. Interesting. This is a text-based adventure available in English only. Okay. Simply pick the dialogue choice. Throughout the story, you might run into redemption codes. Make sure to copy them down to claim later in game. Oh, yes, I will. Well, that is awesome. Also, yeah, we're going to put all the codes on the screen in case you haven't gotten the same codes during your event. After you finish the story, you can start over. You may even end up with another ending. That's crazy. Okay, if you guys, I'm gonna link, post all the codes that I got in the description to this video. If you got any more codes that I didn't get, please post them in the comments so I can update the list so we can get every, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna look up, probably somebody already did this. I'm gonna look up the full list of codes and I'm gonna put it in uh, the description to this video so you can go and claim them all. Stories best place in full screen on desktop computers. Smaller monitors and mobile devices may truncate the text or the choice buttons. Okay. Make sure that you have inventory space before claiming rewards in your mailbox. Oh, that's important. Okay. Okay. So there's still almost a whole month. So you have time. You have time to do this. Let's start the event. I wish you could make this bigger, but can I can I make this bigger? I'm just gonna zoom it in as much as I can so you guys can see everything that's happening. It's one of those days in Dreamlight Valley where everything is practically perfect. It's spring, and all the flowers are in bloom. A rabbit dashes past your foot, hoping, hopping towards the meadow. You follow after it, looking out at all you've done to make the village perfect. Your crops are watered and thriving, and there are no night thorns anywhere to be seen. The sun is shining. It's not too hot, and it's not too cold. You hear the distant uh, sounds of laughter and joy. In fact, you haven't even heard a single tantrum from Donald all day. <gasps> a perfect day like this. Okay, options. Makes you want to just relax and enjoy it. Fills you with anxiety. Nothing can be this perfect for long. Okay, I'm definitely the second kind. So, let's see. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. They have a whole bot to make this experience. Oh, that's amazing. In Dreamlight Valley, nothing stays calm for long. You're on edge just waiting for the forgetting to strike. Or some sort of evil curse to be unleashed. Or a villager to start disappearing into the here and there. Or... Oh, blast it all! Your anxiety has been interrupted by a sound of Merlin shouting. He rushes past you, grumbling and muttering to himself. Oh, it's most relief to have something go wrong. You walk over to Merlin and see what the problem is. 
After a moment of hesitation, he whirls around and you realize that his beard is looking quite glittery today. Very glittery, in fact. There are also bits of confetti and shining stars stuck in there. Oh my god, I love your new look! <laughs> it's not a fashion choice, Merlin Snipes. It's a prank, and a not a very funny one. He shakes some glitter out of his beard, grumbling even louder. Someone left a large bucket of glitter strung up in the Forest of Valor. I was collecting dream shards for experiment. Then, uh, when the confounded thing fell on me, I know who it was. It was Mark Rober. <laughs> okay. But why anyone would do that? Are you sure it wasn't an accident? Sounds like a pretty funny prank to me. Why would anyone do that? That's a good question. To Merlin, no less. Seems like a sort of a mean trick to pull. But it's not the kind of a thing uh, any of the villains around here would try. That is true. It does sound like a prank. Merlin massages the bridge of his nose and continues. I'm afraid there can only be one explanation to this. He sighs, shakes uh, loose one particularly annoying bit of glitter. The festival of foolishness has begun. Oh boy, that sounds exciting. Uh, festival of what now? Festival of foolishness, Merlin repeats with a deep sigh. So what's it all about, you ask? I've never heard of this festival. Long ago, before the forgetting, there was a festival dedicated to hijinks, tomfoolery, and general shenanigans each spring at this time. Merlin says with a deep sigh. I suppose, dear me, I suppose I was hoping everyone had um, forgotten it. But the moment the f weather started to turn warmer, it seems everyone's memories came rushing back, and a few of our villagers are all too happy for an excuse to make things more ridiculous around here. That sounds like a good thing. You're, you're being too serious, Merlin. Relax. It sounds like fun. It does sound like fun. Fun? Merlin says, exasperated. It's not fun. It's a colossal waste of time. A nuisance. A distraction from the pursuit of knowledge. He runs his hands through his beard one last time, setting loose another burst of sparkly glitter. Grrr. When I find out who did this, I'll... He gives and whirls away, headed to the Dreamlight Library. You'd best watch out. You could be next. I hope I'm next. I, it kind of sounds like a very fun adventure. You look around and hear some squeals of laughter and surprise in the distance. It seems everyone in Dreamlight Valley is getting it on the fun already. You decide to check on how the festival festivities are going for. Anna and Olaf, Moana and Mother Gothel, Ariel and Wally, and Mirabel and Minnie. Interesting pairings. Hmm. I think I'm gonna check out on Mirabel and Minnie, you know? You find Mirabel and Minnie in the peaceful meadow, working on some sort of garden. Hola, Mirabel says, chuckling with excitement. Minnie and I decided to team up for La Fiesta de la Tonteria. I think. Come see. We didn't want to do anything that might be too mean, Minnie says. So it seems like a, a fun idea, Mirabel adds. Go ahead. Try one of our vegetables. I don't see Moana and Mother Gothel being pranks pranksters, to be honest. I don't know why Stitch and Donald is not on this list. Maybe because they're too good for me to join them. They don't need any help. Okay, take a carrot, tomato, potato. I'm not touching anything. I'll take... A potato! Is it gonna be a code for a new potato? <laughs> it is a code! You pull up a potato from their garden, but sadly it's not golden. Then you realize that it's made of paper mache. It looks almost real. You're just glad you didn't try t taking a bite out of it. It was so much fun to make the mini laughs. We have a lot of materials left over. Maybe you could use some of them. She hands you a crate of supplies! All right, we're, we're, we're gonna copy this real quick. I have a feeling, what if I click tomato right now? It is the same, so, so you get the crate of supplies no matter what. Okay, okay, good. Okay, you take Minnie's gift and look back around the peaceful meadow, let's go. 
As you walk back to the plaza, you spot a huge cardboard treasure chest popped right down in the middle of the path. It looks like just big enough for a couple of people to hide inside. Someone has posted a sign beside it that reads, Do not open. Very powerful dark magic inside. From within you can hear the sound of giggling. When the sound of someone yelling, Ooh, get off my foot. That is Stitch and Donald. Another unmistakable voice cries out, Ika Patuka! As you step closer, you hear Stitch say, Achakopa. The treasure chest goes silent and both inhibitants shushing each other. I think I think this prank is not gonna be successful. Knock the box over. That's a good idea. You're not a, you're not about to get pranked by anybody, but certainly not by Donald and Stitch. You walked up and knocked the treasure chest over gently enough that you're sure not to hurt either of its inhabitants. You should have took it, taken the chest and put it, like, in, in the ocean and let it float away. <laughs> Imagine Donald and Stitch come out and it's like... Oh, wait. Technically, there is a waterfall that goes into abyss, so they would probably die. Yeah, bad idea. With a shout of surprise, both Donald and Stitch come tumbling out. They're covered in dark purple streamers as if they were surrounded by smelling dark magic. <gasps> Whack! What's the big idea? Donald shouts. <laughs> Good effort, guys. Ha! Stitch and Donald best pranksters ever, Stitch says, beaming. This is strange, you say. You two usually prank each other. What made you team up? Stitch explains. Stitch best prankster in the village. Donald second best. Together, we better than best. Good point. Exactly, Donald say. Then we... Then he thinks about it for a moment. Wait, except the part where you said... You're the best prankster. I'm the best prankster. Why does it say pranker? Whatever, Stitch replies. You see how we prank Merlin? Make him all shiny. You look at Stitch and Donald standing before you and your head is suddenly filled with one thought. They're going to make the best pranking team in the valley. I'll help them. It's going to be a disaster. They need my help. So basically, I'm helping them no matter what. I think, I think they're going to be great. I'm going to help them. Stitch and Donald are just chaotic enough that they'll be able to surprise everyone in Dreamlight Valley with their shenanigans. But they might need a little bit of help to do it, that is true. Why don't I come along and help you offer? Yes! Stitch shrieks, now we can even- now we're even better team! With you around, we'll be unstoppable, Donald says. What's next? Stitch ponders. What is funniest prank? You think on Stitch's question for a moment before suggesting. Something with socks, something with lamps. Okay, let's go with lamps. I'm kind of curious where this is going. I got it, you cry out. Let's replace the lamps in everybody's house with the one lamp Scrooge is always trying to sell. <laughs> they know! They know! It's not like the Scrooge store is rigged. That lamp is actually rigged. <clears throat> the blue one? Yeah, I must have a thousand of those. He's always got them on display. They making fun of their own game! <laughs> That's hilarious. Ugly lamp, Stitch says, but funny prank. Wow, Disney Dreamlight Valley is poking fun on themselves. Not many creators, not, not many game developers can do that. Well done, that was funny. And, and, and also they should replace every coat hanger with a mannequin that that will also be funny you harvest enough pumpkins to sell for star coins to buy all the lamps scrooge's shop has in its back room <laughs> and scrooge will think that these lamps are popular and get even more of those that is a bad plan i, I, I have a feeling it's gonna backfire then you put the ones left over on the street corners and in the deepest darkest corners of the valley there's nowhere you can go without stumbling on one of those lamps Luckily, since Mr. McDuck sold you the lamps in bulk, you've even got some pumpkins left over at the end. <gasps> in game claim code. Oh, yeah. A prank well done. After a few hours and more than a few pranks, you find yourself back in the peaceful meadow. That was pretty good. 
But if we're gonna be remembered as the best pranksters, Donald Ponders, we have to do one really big prank. Oh yeah, Stitch laughs. Stitch have idea. Blow stuff up with lasers. I'm not gonna say I hate it, but I'm not gonna say I like it either. <laughs> Wait, there is an attachment? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Lasers are fun, Stitchy. Oh, wait. Lasers? Donald says with a note of exasperations. That's preposterous. The last thing we need around here is you blasting things with lasers. I agree with Donald. Lasers are fun, Stitch yells. Whack! Donald shouts back. You'll need to suggest someone to prank before these two start fighting again. Or worse, before they get a hold of a laser and blow up one of the floating islands around Dreamlight Valley. What is even on those things anyway? Okay. I was very skeptical when before people said that uh, the next biome can be floating islands. Now... I'm a believer. This is... There is no way this is a coin... Th this means something. I can tell you that this means something. This comment there, it, it's it's a it's a little, it's a little Easter egg, and I'm sure I'm, I'm okay. I'm not sure, but I'm I have a very strong suspicion. That's the next biome is going to be something to do with floating islands. This this convinced me. What what do you think? Let me know in the comments. But who should you prank? At just that moment, two potential prime pranking candidates go past. Oh, all of this foolishness is bad for business, Scrooge McDuck mutters as he walks by you. As I always say, a confused mind never buys. If you can, can I fel tell what you might get, then you're not likely to spend, are you? On the other side of the meadows, Ursula pops out of the pond. Ah, oh, all this foolishness is interfering with my deal making. I'd be more than glad when this nonsense is finished. After a moment of hesitation, you say, Hey, why don't we prank... I mean, I love Scrooge. I I, 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 I will never disrupt your business, my, my, my beautiful man. So we're gonna, we're gonna prank Ursula. Ursula! St Stitch says excited. Yes! Ursula fun to make mad. Pranking Ursula, that's gonna be difficult, Donald says. Tricking people is what she does, but I know we can do it. And I know that too. Stitch closes his eyes and furrows his brow and thinks really hard. How trick Ursula? What What if we put, uh, like, you know those pool covers? Uh, like people use for pools for winter. What if we put all like those pool covers over every single lake in the valley? Now that's a prank. Donald takes Stitch's face in his hands and shouts, "Think harder!" <laughs> Stitch suddenly raises his arms in triumph. Oh, Stitch got it! Ursula make potions, yeah? We change potions to go boom. Stitch just likes explosions. That sounds dangerous, but... I mean, Ursula has a bunch of arms. If, if she loses a couple, it's not a big deal, right? I'm not sure this is a good idea. This sounds hilarious. Why must your ideas end in explosions? That's the obvious answer. Because... Because Boom is funny. Okay, we're gonna go hilarious. Uh, let's, let's go for it. You're right, Donald says. This is a great idea. Donald and Stitch run off towards Ursula later. You chase after them because somebody needs to make sure they don't end up in Ursula's garden or worse. You all tiptoe into Ursula's lair and find it mercifully empty. The sea witch is nowhere to be found. Here we go, Donald says, looking up at, at her shelves full of potion bottles. Haha, she won't take a clue what happened. He and Stitch start swapping around the labels on each bottle. They pour out some mix others up add a little glitter you're amazed when nothing explodes we're the best donald cheers and you all leave ursula's lair well how what is the guarantee that things are gonna explode you don't even know what you're doing you should have just put some gunpowder <laughs> explosion <clears throat> about an hour later you hear a loud kablam from the direction of Ursula's lair. Stitch and Donald 
look at each other excitedly and rush over to see what's happened. Ursula emerges glitter all over her face and the edges of her hair slightly singed. She looks angry, even for Ursula. If I don't find out who did this soon, Ursula bellows at the races. As she races from one point to the next, I'm going to turn everyone in this village into a sea slug. Wow. Well, if you want everybody to look like you, then it makes sense. Uh-oh, Donald says, if feathers, if feathers could go pale, you suspect he'd be going pale right now. Ursula's so mad, Stitch says. It's not funny anymore. Did you think it would... How would she react? What if you explode? Like, what if I put, like, some gunpowder in your lemon... In your orange juice and you drink it and explode? Does that sound funny? You have to find some way to make this up to Ursula before she turns the whole valley into giant version of her garden. What did they expect? I wonder what would happen if you prank Scrooge. You can tell me. I mean, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do explore that line after the video, but yeah, we'll see. So we're going to build her a new potion skit or distract Ursula through flattery. I'm not going to build her anything. Come on. Get your own goddamn potion kit. You should watch what you're mixing, girl. All right. Nothing makes Ursula happier than a bit of flattery, you say. Let's get together a gift basket to thank her just for being her. Maybe it will be enough to distract her. Donald and Stitch both rush off together things, banging into each other and squabbling a bit in the process. Soon they come back with a load of stuff they, they found around the village. You put them together and make a gift basket. Stitch and Donald make a card to the smartest, best business person in the village. I better bring this to Ursula. <laughs> you say with a sigh as you head off to find her. You find Ursula in the Forgotten Lands, still stewing over her embarrassment. I don't think she's stewing about embarrassment. I think she's stewing about losing a lot of valuable potion ingredients. Uh, what do you want? Come to Glowed, have you? No, you say. I came to here to apologize for the villagers who pranked you, which were you. You you were one, you were the one who, who 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 said it was a good idea. So shut up. It's your fault. I mean my fault. Damn it. You know who did this? She hisses between her gritted teeth. Tell me now, and maybe I'll spare the rest of the village instead of turning everyone into a sea slug. You hand her the gift basket. The villagers who pranked you, well, they want you to know they're really sorry. They didn't mean for it to turn out how it did. You literally, that's the way it turned out exactly the way they planned for it to turn out. Exactly. This is ridiculous. My God. <sighs> they just wanted you to feel included in the festivities. They wanted me to feel included? Ursula mutters bewildered. Ursula considers the gift basket. Hmm. I suppose I'll accept as long as you make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Of course, Ursula. I really am sorry this happened. I say, and I mean it. Hmm. Promise, I say with my fingers crossed behind my back. Now that's more like it. You try not to smirk, but it's fun to finally get to bamboozle Ursula instead of the other way around. Ursula swims off with her gift in hand. Be you, says Stitch. Happy we're not... Oh, phew. <laughs> Happy we're not in Ursula's garden. Me too, Donald says. Not that I was scared of her, but it's good you solved it before I had to give Ursula a piece of my mind. <laughs> Donald holds out a crate of supplies to you. We had some extra stuff we gathered up to replace all those bottles we broke. You can have them. W w what did you gather, guys? I hope it's not empty bottles, because I have way too many of them. Is this the end? Is this the end of the event? A grand day of pranks is finally coming to an end. The sun will be setting soon. I've been asked to invite you three to a little celebration, Ursula says, smirking. You've proven yourselves to be among the finest tricksters in the valley. It's only right that you get that you're rewarded. 
Reward Stitch says, yeah, I know what's going to happen. She's going to bring them. About time I get some appreciation around here, Donald says. Be in the plaza at sundown, Ursula says. And trust me, you won't want to be late. She swims off and Donald and Stitch start celebrating. But this all seems a bit suspicious to you. Ursula, inviting you to celebration. You wonder if the pranksters are about to become the prankies. Oh, yes, they are. They're going to get wrecked. You enter the plaza just in time to see a perfect sunset, and all the villagers gathered around to enjoy it. Olaf stands on the stage in the center of the plaza. He is wearing a sash and looks excited to be taking a part in this grand tradition. He, he hoists up a huge golden trophy. A banner above him says, Annual Fooling Ceremony. The rest of the villagers are gathered around to watch as you, Stitch, and Donald march up on stage. Donald and Stitch are eager to get their prize. You can't help but notice a bit of a twinkle in Merlin's eye as he looks at you all. Oh, always, always Merlin. Merlin nods at the trophy and mutters, Hijitus, fidgetus, under his breath. Looks like Merlin has had just about enough of all the pranking around here, and he is ready to turn the tables on Stitch and Donald to teach them a lesson. I can block it, or I can ma add my own magic to make it stronger. Well, I kind of help them, so I'll, I'll make it stronger. You focus your dreamlight magic to add an extra sparkle to Merlin's prank. Suddenly, the trophy in Donald's and Stitch's hands leaps to life. But that's not all. Thanks to your bit of magic, it sprouts it two Night Thorns arms and starts waving them around. The enchanted trophy wrestles free of Donald grasp and begins running towards the forest of valor. Whack! Donald shouts, my trophy! Stitch want trophy! Stitch yells and he leaps off the stage barreling after it. I changed my mind, Merlin laughs, as Stitch and Donald chase the trophy, stumbling and tripping over each other as they, as they go. Perhaps the festival of foolishness is more fun than I thought. <sighs> Okay, I got four codes. I wonder if there is any more. I'm gonna, once again, discover all the codes and uh, we're gonna redeem them in the game and I I'll put them all in the description. Thank you so much for joining me for the Festival of Foolishness. I love this event. They should do this more often. Uh, like, it sounds like, it sounds really cool. Maybe we'll do something like this on my own Discord server when it opens. It it's a great idea. Well done, Disney Dreamlight Valley. All right, let me show you how to claim all the codes. And by the way, thank you so much for 17,000 subscribers. Uh, this is the outfit we designed especially for 17,000 and I'm absolutely in love. I think it turned out amazing. It was inspired by the beautiful table that we got during the stream from the Scrooge store and uh, it had stars on it. So I decided to make st basically st star inspired uh, outfit. And I think it turned out really well. Thank you so much, guys, for helping. Uh, so once you got your codes, you can go to uh, help in your menu. And here there's a field redemption code. You just copy the codes. I'm going to leave all the codes, all nine codes that you can obtain through this event in description in case you missed any. So you can make sure you claim every single reward. Uh, okay, claim the code. I already claimed two of them. So let's go into re uh, the inbox and see what we get. We got eight pumpkins. Not much, but you know what? It's an honest work. Uh, we got some fabric, some cotton, some clay. It's decent. Make sure you have space in your inventory when you claim. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. Let me show you the full list of rewards. So basically, here is the, uh, the screenshot I found on Reddit for uh, every single code and every single reward that you get. So... The best rewards, in my opinion, is for the ending. There's two different endings, and there's two uh, different codes for Moonstones. Each 150 Moonstones, which means you can get 300 free Moonstones for doing this event. It's incredible. Uh, you get iron bars, gold bars, rusty parts. Wow, aerial souvenirs really get. Uh, eight pumpkins, five dream shards, five night shards, which is not that great. Uh, snowballs, hardwood, glass. Diamond, Ruby, Sapphires, uh, 5 Kingfish, 5 Fugu, 5 Anglefish, Cotton, Fabric, Clay. So basically you get lots of resources 
but honestly 300 moonstones is absolutely amazing very fun event highly recommend uh to check it out and uh yeah thank you so much for watching huge thanks to all our supporters including all the new members that we got today and new patreons look at this list it's growing every day it, it's absolutely incredible guys you make make it possible for me to produce awesome daily content for you thank you so much all the dreamlight heroes and our first legend miss cupcake she came today and she gifted 100 memberships in total and she became a dreamlight legend patch patreon so thank you so much uh natalie clark our one and only so far demigod uh you guys are absolutely incredible i love you all i'll see you in the next one and take care <laughs>